Good morning. Anybody else? Oh, I got one more coming. <laughs> Good morning, Evelyn. All right, Annie, you want to sit down? Hi. Well, I have a question for you guys. Did you know that one day everything around you is going to be different? Have you ever thought about that? Everything around you is going to be different. Cause, I'm sick. Cause you're sick? Oh, no, that's not good. Yeah. Right? I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> there will be apple trees. There will be apple trees. Yeah. Sometimes trees grow. What else changes? And pineapple trees. Mm hmm. Yep. Pineapples grow. What else grows? Or what changes? And orange. Yeah. And. Yeah. Okay, yes, food grows and changes, trees do. What about, what about the seasons? Do the seasons change? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Do you guys change? Yes. Yeah. yeah, how do you change? Yeah. yeah. You change, yeah? Yep. Well, I have something. Everything changes around us, and one day it's all going to look very different. You guys are, are kind of small right now, but look at this. So this is a picture. These are, this is I, a, I'm four. I know. Look at this. This is a picture 19 years ago this week of my kids. This is Alex. This is Hannah. Now, in this picture, this is yesterday, 19 years later. Hannah's the one on the left. Do you think she looks a little different than this one? Yeah, she's taller. She's, she's much more grown up. Yeah, that's right. They're wearing the same clothes. This is my, this is a picture. It has my son in it. I want to see if you can even guess which one is him. This is him in this picture. Which one is him in this picture? Nope. You would think, right? Nope. It's this one. He looks so different, doesn't he? Yeah, things change over time. And you know what? We can't change that. We can't change the fact that things change. And they're all going to be different one day. What was the same when I was your age is very different now. But you know what? There's always one thing that stays the same. What do you think that is? One thing that stays the My same. My sister Elizabeth is 10. She is 10. Mm -hmm. But she's not going to stay 10 forever. The lights don't change. Well, the lights might even change. We're going to have to change out the light bulbs because they'll run out one day. Yeah. Do you know what? Never... Oh, did I turn? No, okay. So here's the thing. The one thing that never changes around us is God's love. God's love and faithfulness for, with us is never, ever going to change. So even though other things might look different, might be a little scary sometimes or whatever, we know that God is always with us and God's love is never going to change. So will you pray with me, please? Will you pray with me, please? Dear God, thank you so much for all of the ways that we grow and change and help us um, in the times when that change is scary or sad. Um, we thank you so much that your love and your grace never changes and that we can always count on you for that. We pray this in your name. Amen. Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Did you know that someday everything around you will be different? Some changes come quickly and some take years to take effect and we don't really see the change unless we step away for a little bit or pull out old pictures and compare them to the, the more recent ones. And some changes are exciting and some are painful. Just this week in our congregation on Sunday at this service, we welcomed and baptized a new baby in worship, Miles. And yesterday, we had a new baby born into our congregation to Sam and Danielle Johnson. And on Thursday, God fulfilled the baptismal promises for Bud Wreck, the same ones made for Miles last week and also last night for Rick Siegel, as we say goodbye to Bud and Rick in this life on earth as they join the communion of saints in our midst. We know that every day, all around us things change, and yet we often resist. Why? I think sometimes it's because it's hard to know that as time goes on, everything will be different. 
We resist some of the silly things. Like I remember when I was little, I would cry every time my mom recovered this particular chair in our living room. It was my favorite chair. And I would get so upset every time. I think sometimes perhaps we grieve those little changes because deep down we know that the big things are gonna change. And if we could only hang on to just a few little things, maybe it would make those big changes not as terrible or scary, right? But that's just not true, is it? No matter how much we keep trying to keep things the same, they change. It's this big disillusionment of growing up, like trying to find the magic in the holidays. Um, once you're grown up and you have so many things that you have to take care of and so many relationships in your life have changed and the, and the traditions have changed and it's hard to find that magic. Or when your best friend moves across the country. Or you're preparing for bed one night and the person you've always said goodnight to is no longer there. In every change we encounter transitions between something old and something new. And sometimes these transitions are more of a welcome change, and sometimes they're not. Sometimes the transition itself is just so painful and hard. And at the same time, the result is just as beautiful as before, just different. I have a plaque in my living room that says, without change, we wouldn't have butterflies. And if you have ever watched a butterfly come out of its cocoon or a, or a moth, it's a hard process and you just want to help them so badly. It looks like they're just not going to make it. They're struggling so much, but that struggle is what's necessary to gain the strength for them to break free and be able to fly. They have to go through that in order to be able to be a beautiful butterfly. We know that everything changes and yet we often resist because it makes us uncomfortable, or we want to keep experiencing the joy that something has always brought us, or the hope that we have because of what has been. And yet, even in Scripture, we're told that things will change. Today, in our reading from Jeremiah, God tells uh, Jeremiah to tell the people that things are going to be different. There's going to be a new covenant. This law alone thing wasn't working really well, and us forming relationships between each other and God. And so God says there's going to be a new covenant and relationship will be restored. God says it will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people no longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. And I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. In Romans 3, today, Paul writes about this new covenant that has happened after what Christ has done for us. That we're not justified by our deeds anymore, nor our atonement for our misdeeds. But we're justified in faith, the relationship that we have with God and Christ. And in our gospel today, which very much echoes, in a, in a way, the Jeremiah reading, Jesus preaches about the change from what has been in the past. This new covenant is starting with Jesus. Jesus addresses the people that had been following him and had believed in him and tells them that if they continue to follow him, he will make them free. They will be made free. But this is during a time where some of these followers are starting to get a little bit nervous. Things have been changing a lot, and, um, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and other groups of leaders are starting to get a little bit antsy, and they're starting to wonder, do we keep believing in this guy? Is this a faithful thing to do? Why does he think he's going to make us free? Isn't it because we're followers of God and God's law? And because they follow God, they believe they're not slaves to anyone. God has always freed them, so they wouldn't be slaves to anyone. But Jesus turns this old understanding upside down and says it's not about being slaves to other people and being set free from earthly human oppressors, like for them at the time, the Romans. Jesus says if you were human, you were a slave to sin. So all of them, all of us, are slaves to sin, and all of us need to be set free. And it's this reason that in continuing to have faith in Jesus, they will be made free because it's Jesus who makes us free. 
Now, this is a huge change for the Hebrew people, the Israelites, the Jews, who had always been freed from slavery under people. And now they're being told that's not really what Jesus has come for. Jesus has come to re, uh, relieve them or set them free from their slavery to sin. And so will we be freed because of our faith in Christ. <clears throat> this means we really, though, don't have much say in our fate, doesn't it? It's a little bit different than maybe what they thought before. We can't control our salvation through our deeds just as much as we can't control the world around us and what changes in our lives. And because they had no idea what the future would bring, this was a, perhaps a change that the, the Jews were really resisting. They had always followed the law, and this is what made them God's people. But now what Jesus teaches is different, and often when things are different, we become uncomfortable or we get confused or afraid and we resist. So what do we do with this? Or as Martin Luther says, so what would this mean? <laughs> we have no control over the change that is inevitable in our lives. We have no control how we are justified, except that we are gifted with grace and faith through our relationship with God. Where is the hope then to wipe away the fear if we have no control, right? So to find us, let's get back to Jeremiah and what God has done anew. While everything that is familiar to us in life will change, or just about everything will change over time, there is one thing that will not, and this one thing is God's faithfulness and God's love. That God knows us and that we know God and that God's covenant will never change. And so this means we can face all the other changes or transitions or reforming and reshaping in our lives with hope because of God's love and God's grace, and that they will always remain with us throughout all of that. This weekend, we celebrate the Reformation. Reform is another way of saying change. And the Reformation we commemorate is a date way back in 1517, when the church began to change drastically. And this change invited people of that time to take a look at their faith and to reform their relationship once again with God. Luther invited the church to look at its practices and reform or change. And so the church changed and faith remained, and God's faithfulness remained. While the world and the government and the exploration and the religious practices and the leadership and the science and the innovations and inventions of that time were rapidly growing and reforming, God's faithfulness never changed, and we still know God, and God still knows us. And this reminds me that today I think we're still experiencing change all around us and maybe in many ways like 500 years ago. Sometimes I feel like our culture today can be compared greatly to that time. So much is changing so fast, so much seems uncertain, there's a great deal of tension over what the future holds. The church feels different. I often hear people lament the church of old, back in the day. And yet shouldn't we know that it won't stay the same, because it never does. And we should never remain the same. We should always allow God to transform and reform us. And change is good, and change is hard, and change is full of joy and hope and sadness, all at the same time. And in the midst of this change in our lives around us, God's faithfulness and love never change, and there is hope, and this is the rock of our salvation. So did you know that one day everything around you will be different? Paul writes, look, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. Jesus reminds us that while all is changed, God changed it for the good. In God's new covenant, all has been reformed, and we know God, and God knows us, and we will never again be a slave to sin. We will be made free. Amen.